Day 1 It's been one day since every human except you disappeared from the face of the Earth. You're not sure what happened. One moment there you were, living your best life in the middle of a crowded city, and next, poof, everyone simply disappeared. What followed was complete chaos. Cars, trucks, vans, tens of thousands of them suddenly had no drivers. Catastrophic crashes and pileups worthy of a Blues Brothers movie have choked the streets of your city with impassable obstacles of wrecked and mangled steel. You had to duck for safety into the nearest building, though, because the sky was falling, literally. Without pilots, planes not currently on autopilot simply plummeted out of the sky like massive missiles, setting off explosions that rocked the city. Massive blazes immediately sprang up, and with no firefighters to fight them, your only resort was to begin fleeing the city. Other planes running on autopilot simply ran out of gas, then began to fall all over the countryside. Firestorms erupted all over the earth, fed by the leaking fuel of millions upon millions of wrecked vehicles. On day one, all you can do is try to get to safety and out of the heart of the city, which is quickly becoming a raging blaze. You opt against taking a car. The streets are simply too choked with stalled, abandoned, and wrecked vehicles, so instead you hop onto a bicycle and pedal for your life. The fires grow to massive proportions, feeding off the many combustible materials that make up modern city life. By the time you got to safety, dusk was already falling, and the city behind you glowed bright orange from the flames. As day one comes to a close, you manage to find something to eat at a convenience store. You don't bother saving any for later. You now have literally an entire world of food at your disposal, but most of it will go bad very quickly. That's because when night comes, only part of the city lights up with automatic streetlights. Fire has damaged the power network, and the lack of humans has caused many power plants around the world to shut down. Refrigeration will soon fail. Day 2 You need to think about survival, so day 2 is spent scouting out a place to stay in the outskirts of the city, one of the areas that still has power. That means the plumbing still works, but not for long. Without human supervision, nuclear plants begin to automatically shut themselves down to avoid meltdowns. Coal, oil, natural gas plants, they're all shutting down as they run out of fuel. Your city manages to hold out for half the day before it too loses power. But there's other municipalities powered by renewable energy, and those will last a little bit longer. So you pack up your stuff and siphon gas to make the necessary trip. The highways are also a mess, but large enough to be traversable. A good four-wheel drive vehicle lets you hop off-road when necessary to avoid big trouble spots. In the rearview mirror, the unattended fire is spreading across the city and even into the surrounding wilderness. There's no fire departments to manage the blaze, and yours isn't the only city on fire. By the end of the day, most of the world's major cities have been devastated by massive, fast-burning fires. If you weren't the last person on Earth, you hope that whoever else was left got out of the cities as quickly as possible. On your trip, you run across a lot of pets running loose. These animals have had to face a tough choice. Break free from their homes, cages, or enclosures, or starve to death. Natural instincts kicked in, and now former pets roam free across America and the rest of the world. Millions upon millions more will die, though, locked up in houses, apartments, or cages with their owners having disappeared. Inside zoos all across the world, animals who are used to being routinely fed aren't getting their daily meals. This has caused some of the animals to get extremely agitated and test the limits of their enclosures. Many of them, too, will die in their enclosures, but some will manage to escape and break free. Lions roam freely on the streets of America and beyond. Day 3 Big Ben rings out for the last time. The massive clock needs to be wound every three days, and with no one around to do it, the iconic landmark goes silent forever. Eerily silent, wild animals have begun to probe the borders of human cities, places they had before avoided like the plague. The first are the predators, always opportunistic and looking for an easy meal. And there's plenty of food left lying around and easily accessible for wild animals to get to. But formerly domesticated pets make for pretty good prey as well. The animals having few of their formerly wild instincts and, in most cases, never having come face to face with a predator. Dogs, however, have begun to form roving packs, reverting back to their natural instincts to gather into groups. Smaller dogs end up meals for larger dogs, and smaller breeds are being far more successful at survival than the larger breeds. Originally, dogs such as terriers were bred for pest control or hunting small game, and in a world made up of massive abandoned cities, those smaller breeds find plenty of game in cats, rats, and other small animals. Larger dogs require more calories, and without the instinct to seek out large prey in the wild, big breeds are the first to start to die off. Many birds are also starting to enter into a dramatic decline in population numbers. Seagulls and pigeons, for example, have heavily relied on the human population centers as a source of easy food. But with no humans generating trash and organic waste, the food supply is dried up. Some of these have long forgotten natural hunting instincts. And who even remembers what pigeons used to eat before they were fed breadcrumbs at city parks or picked through your garbage bags? Day 10 
The fires have finally died down in most of the world's cities, leaving behind smoldering ruins and putting massive plumes of toxic ash into the sky. You're having to survive off bottled water because the rain is laden with all kinds of heavy metals and nasty chemicals, making most water sources completely undrinkable. The general lack of maintenance has finally caused most of the world's green energy power generating plants to finally shut down. But you could count yourself lucky because inside nuclear power plants left unattended, disasters are unfolding. Nuclear generators can be managed for a time without human supervision, but not for long. Eventually, the pumps providing cooling water will inevitably fail, and massive steam pressure builds up inside the heart of each reactor. Explosions rock the plants as one by one the reactors blow their tops and vent thousands of pounds of highly radioactive steam. The uncooled fuel rods, however, continue to melt through the casing of the reactor and drop to the floor of the facility. Some will penetrate even the concrete foundation and might end up contaminating groundwater supplies. For now, it's best to steer clear of any nuclear power plants and remain upstream of them as they vent nuclear materials into the air and water around them. Wildlife in the surrounding areas begins to die off over the next few days from the amount of radiation vented into the countryside. But the damage is limited in scope. Hundreds of miles from the nearest nuclear power plant, you're safe from the effects. But you've got a bigger problem. Bottled water is going to last you a long, long time as long as you keep the plastic bottles out of the sun. But food won't last as long. There's canned goods galore, as not even the huge city-consuming blazes could eliminate all stashes of preserved foods. But you're going to be dealing with heavy sodium intake if you live off preserved goods. There's also a real concern on vitamin deficiencies, so you supplement your canned diet with vitamins you loot from a pharmacy. While you're at it, you raid one of the few remaining physical libraries to get your hands on any medical textbooks so you can prepare for the worst. Knowing first aid is no longer a nicety, it's an absolute survival necessity. While you were at it, you decided to pick up additional survival skills. The internet is no more. But you can still find plenty of survival materials in libraries and specialty military surplus and prepper stores. Knowing how to make fires without artificial aid is a great skill to have. Sure, you have billions upon billions of lighters to loot at your disposal, but the fuel inside them can go bad. Butane is especially prone to evaporating. It might do so in a matter of days if left out in the open. Gasoline will likewise go bad due to oxidation, and it could last anywhere from a few months to a few years before either breaking down or evaporating. You take advantage while you have plenty of available gas that can be siphoned off other vehicles and drive around to gather supplies for long-term survival. This means tools to help you feed yourself, things such as fishing poles, rifles, lures, snares, and traps. You could probably live for a decade or more on non-perishables left all around the world, but once gas goes bad, you'll have a hell of a time actually getting around and gathering them up. Year 1 Formerly domesticated pets have reverted back to feral lifestyles, at least those that survived the adjustment period of the first few months. Small breeds have done pretty well for themselves thanks to the plethora of rats and mice inside human cities. Cats likewise have done well, being very independent already. Large breeds have fared much worse, though, and few of them remain alive. Winter was especially hard for the populations of former pets. Many of these dogs and cats have been moved to places they couldn't naturally survive winter without human help, and in these places they've largely died off. Most temperate locations, such as the ruins of the city you live next to, however, have allowed many of these pets to survive through the winter. As more and more wild animals invade the cities, even some larger packs of dogs have managed to survive by grouping together, though there's definitely many more small breeds left than big breeds. The city looks largely as it did when people disappeared, minus the burn damage. Grass and weeds have managed to overgrow any green spaces, especially the city parks, which were previously kept nicely manicured and orderly. There's even blades of grass or resilient weeds popping up in cracks in the pavement here and there. It's still mostly predatory animals lurking in the cities, but they don't go very far in. By now, surviving pets have learned how to band together for protection against mountain lions, wolves, even bears, or to avoid them altogether. Some places such as New York with a large central park have seen herbivores like deer migrate into the city, but nature has yet to retake enough of the human landscape to invite many of them in. With the exception of cities along the equator, here the fast-growing vegetation has already started to overrun human settlements. Fast-growing vines and bushes have invaded cities in places like Brazil and equatorial Africa. Unchecked growth has caused formerly harvested fields to now play host to a variety of plant life. Traditional crops still grow abundantly thanks to how widely humans cultivated them, but they no longer grow in neat and orderly rows. There's no fear of crops like wheat, barley, or rice ever going extinct. But some crops such as almonds, oranges, and other fruits no longer grow in many areas of the world. That's because they only grew where planted because of direct human intervention. 
By and large, the crops that humanity depended on and successfully cultivated for millennia have begun to only appear in their native habitats once more. Year 5 Massive herds of wild cattle, sheep, and even horses reign free across the American Great Plains. These are amongst some of the most successful animals on Earth thanks to the sheer quantities that humans grew them in. Chickens are also doing exceptionally well for themselves, considering humans grew and killed billions of them each year. Despite being very easy prey, formerly domesticated animals have such vast populations that even abundant predation isn't enough to seriously dent their numbers. This has in turn led to an explosion in predator species across the US and beyond. Populations of coyotes, cougars, bears, and wolves have all bounced back to pre-human settlement levels. In Europe, where wolves have been extinct in most places for hundreds of years, massive packs now wander through human cities grown over in thick vegetation. Nature has turned former human cities into urban ecological preserves. Greenery has overtaken gray concrete with astonishing speed, and young forests have begun to encroach on the outskirts of human civilization. With new trees come all the wild animals that make their home there adding to the speed with which animal life is taking over former human cities. You can't rely on canned goods and other non-perishables anymore, as you no longer have access to gasoline with which to drive vehicles around and gather food. Instead, you've learned to hunt and fish for your survival, along with plenty of wild gathering like your ancestors used to do. Year 10 Moss, flowers, grass, and small trees have wormed their way into the very heart of human civilization, consuming the slowly crumbling ruins. This is good for you because you can make easy shelter inside the ruins of the city. And with greenery returning to the cities, animals follow, which means food. You manage to set up a small farm of sorts for yourself right in the heart of the city, rounding up chickens which have spread from farms to temperate areas across the country. You build a coop and have a constant supply of eggs. Cattle might have become wild again, but are still largely complacent after millennia of domestication and it was easy to round them up and even breed them. You don't bother to pen them in and instead let them wander around on their own. Those you butcher for food are a culinary snob's wet dream. Real farm-to-table pure organic and free-range beef. Dogs still remember how to be man's best friend, but even more importantly, they know that humans equal easy food. Thus, it was easy for you to re-domesticate a pack of them, which help guard your livestock. In exchange, they get your scraps. You've re-domesticated the dog exactly the way our ancestors did when they were wild wolves. The kinship between humans and canine is based on mutual benefit and food. The biggest danger in the last 10 years was the collapse of dams all across the country, unleashing billions of gallons of water in devastating floods that wiped out entire towns from the map. With no humans to monitor the water levels and operate sluice gates, water pressure built and built behind the dams until they finally burst. Also with no humans to drain the water away from their cities, farms, and water parks and industry, rivers like the Colorado have returned to their former glory and caused the collapse of the entire dam network built along its course. Much like other dammed rivers around the world, the Colorado now runs as wild and free as it did 200 years ago. Year 20 The night skies started having additional falling stars. After two decades in orbit and with no commands from the ground, satellites had begun to fall back to Earth. Even in the vacuum of space and high above the Earth's atmosphere, satellites still experience a tiny bit of drag from gas and dust. Even if it's just a few molecules the satellite's slamming into, all those impacts add up, leaching speed from the satellite and inevitably causing it to fall back down to Earth. Other man-made objects like the International Space Station only took weeks to fall back to Earth in a fiery wreck. And you can count yourself lucky you weren't anywhere underneath the hundreds of tons of burning molten material crashing to the Earth at thousands of miles an hour. Radiation's begun to clear from areas affected by the meltdown of nuclear power plants, but it'd still be a while before it's truly safe to live in those regions. That hasn't stopped nature from reclaiming the sites, however, and there's even populations of wild animals living there. Their numbers remain low for now, but will grow over time. Without flood control measures, erosion has been a real problem in many man-made settlements. Rivers have carved new channels through landscapes geoengineered by mankind and his massive earth-moving machines. The city of Venice, without regular maintenance and upkeep of its historic buildings and canals, is now more underwater than above it, and sea levels have risen all around the world. Despite there being no more human activity to drive climate change, lingering emissions from billions of cars, factories, ships, trains, and other polluters are still in huge quantities in the atmosphere. These will break down over time, but for now, the temperatures increased by half a degree Fahrenheit, or 0.3 of a degree Celsius. Polar and Antarctic ice continues to melt, albeit at a greatly reduced rate, and sea levels have risen several inches. Coastal cities like Miami have largely been swamped by increased sea levels and storms, and all around the world, massive man-made container ships have long been sunk. Now they make for artificial reefs, which are home to rebounding fish populations. Year 40 Age is catching up with you. 
In the civilized world entering your 60s, you would not be a big deal, but in this new world without modern medicine or modern convenience, you've been lucky to make it this far. Most people would have died of injury, disease, or simply malnutrition in their 40s, but you have some of the benefits of civilization to keep you hale and healthy. Having firearms and plenty of ammunition, which lasts for decades if not longer, helps keep you well fed. If you had to hunt the old way with spear and bow and arrow, you probably wouldn't be as well fed as you are now. Still, it's becoming very difficult for you to keep surviving in this world turn wild. The city is barely recognizable anymore, and places where millions of pedestrians and shoppers used to flock are now completely overgrown by urban forests. Skyscrapers have years ago started falling in on themselves, as their foundations and structural cores weakened due to exposure. Their windows were the first to go within months or a year or two of humans disappearing. And this exposed their inner core to rot and mildew. After a few decades, even the mightiest skyscrapers started falling. Now they loom like artificial mountains that resemble broken, jagged teeth. Global warming has been at last halted, and the Earth has topped out at just over half a degree Celsius or 1.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Polar ice loss has likewise been halted, and the seas have stopped rising. Over the next century, the polar ice will return as the Earth readjusts to a pre-industrial age environment. Fish populations all around the world, formerly on the very edge of complete collapse, have recovered as well. The ocean is truly and well wild, and now teems with life as it once did. Populations of tuna, once fished to scarcity, have returned in force, as have the vast quantities of other formerly overfished species. Coral reefs have also mounted a great comeback, despite the ongoing effects of coral bleaching, and the wrecks of tens of thousands of human ships have helped endangered corals find small pockets of shelter on which to anchor themselves and bloom. Forests are once more reclaiming the American East Coast, and London is slowly but surely reverting back into a swamp. It'll still take a century or more for nature to completely undo the dramatic environmental engineering that humans have conducted over millennia, but eventually, even the mightiest concrete buildings will crumble and break. You won't be around to see it, but within a thousand years, forests will have completely recovered from the effects of humanity all around the world. Not long after, only few human ruins will remain identifiable. Plastics, however, which we produced in staggering abundance will remain for over 25,000 years or even longer, becoming humanity's tombstone and the only sign we once ruled the world. Somehow, that seems fitting. You have no descendants to pass on your experiences or knowledge of a world before humans disappeared, and your only friends are the ever-growing pack of dogs and livestock that have kept you company for decades. Without you, the dogs will revert back to their wild instincts and prey on the livestock but there's so many of them by now that both populations will thrive and survive. Life is hard without modern conveniences or the help of others, and shortly after your 60th birthday and 40 years being the last human on Earth, you close your eyes for the last time. As you fade away, you wonder who will inherit this new world. Will the new primate species rise up and become sentient? It seems likely as apes are the best adapted for advanced intelligence and the tool use required to build civilization. Perhaps then the entire process will simply repeat itself, a new great ape civilization built on the ruins of the old one. Now go check out What If The Earth Stops Spinning Minute by Minute, or click this other video instead.